Hey, hello, <laughs> you're beautiful. Okay, so so many things happened since uh, this morning that I think maybe it's good just to see very very quickly what we did. Okay, so uh, so remember we discussed about this formula and uh, we kind of played the game that this formula describes and uh, uh, indeed we, we, we saw that if we play according to the rules and cheat a bit, yes, then the proof is valid and uh, the formula is correct in classical logic and again Frank mentioned that clearly you know you can think of this backtracking phenomenon uh, in this kind of interactive game semantic way or directly in the uh, proof system and well they do the same they speak about the same thing so then uh, I described uh, the algebra of games so negation tensor product sum and duplication or backtracking okay and then we said okay that's the general principle but now Let's see how it works really on a uh, given model, a concrete model. And this model is given by sequential games. And the sequential game is simply a decision tree where every branch is alternating and open and starts. Okay? Yeah, beware the step. Okay. So that's it. And typically, uh, this is the Boolean game here. Okay? A question by the uh, environment in blue, and then uh, an answer by the player, the program in red. Okay, so true or false here. And then a strategy, okay, we saw what the strategy is, a deterministic strategy in these games. Then, uh, yes, so we're a bit further than this. We saw how to do a tensor product of two sequential games. Then, Linear implication, we built a category, okay? So remember, it means that it's a graph where the vertices are games and the edges are the strategies. And the point of calling that a category instead of just a graph is that we can compose these uh, strategies. So in particular, uh, that was the kind of picture you see here, like the identity strategy is composed with the, the true strategy, okay? So uh, clearly we get the same strategy. I mean, here, this is the true strategy, and then when we compose with the identity, we get the same strategy again, okay? And, uh, well, then there was this important isomorphism, okay? And maybe we can maybe start from this again, okay? Because uh, I think this was kind of historically a, a very strong motivation for game semantics, this isomorphism, because uh, usually if you think about functional uh, programs, and especially lambda terms, they are typically understood as functions. That's why it's called functional programming, okay? And now if you think of the tensor product as some kind of Cartesian product, okay, so like if you have a proof from A times B to C, okay, you can construct a proof from A to B. Okay, and this process of going from say so if we have a, if we have a syntax for that, it's just maybe it's good to write it like this. X Okay, here we get, so it's, it's just a very usual thing. Okay. So this is just the usual thing, okay? But if we think of programs as some kind of functions, you see here, 
something quite subtle happens because we had a term with two inputs. So every time we fix a parameter in A and in B, we get a term, I mean, we get an element in C, okay? And now this is somewhat subtle because this defines a function from B to C, okay? So if you like, curification is non-trivial. But the point is that in this game semantics, it's absolutely trivial to do this operation because, uh, so this was the, uh, the example here, maybe, uh, of evaluation which I took this morning, okay? So evaluation can be seen as this. You have a function and you have an argument and then you apply the function to the argument, okay? And this is the uh, uh, trace of the strategy, okay? So I now I have a special equipment. So, uh, yes. So typically you have the Boolean and the question to the uh, Boolean. And then what the evaluation strategy does is asking the value of the Boolean uh, of this Boolean, which is the output of the function, then the function has the value of the input, the evaluator has the value of this input, he gets an answer from the environment, he transmits it to the function, the function is computed, and then the answer of the function is, is given to the output. Okay, that's the strategy of evaluation, and this is the uh, associated, if you like, lambda term. But now, if you apply this Purification, in fact, you don't touch anything, okay? So that's, if you look at uh, the uh, trace of execution, it's exactly the same. The only thing is that this tensor product here is transported to the right, but that's it, okay? And it means in a way that this operation is meaningless at a, at, at a sufficiently low level, okay? And this is important. So, uh, in particular, if you look at this now, at this strategy, I mean, what, when we do that, this term here, what is this? Do you recognize something you, you're familiar with? <laughs> yes. So this is the eta expansion of f, okay? So this means that if here you have f, and this is f, okay, modulo eta expansion, so indeed, what you get here is the identity strategy. So it's the copycat strategy. You see, so uh, question is mapped to question, then this question is mapped here, the Boolean here is mapped here, the, the Boolean here is mapped here. Okay, so it's really the copycat strategy that you have here, but at the same time, the evaluation is the essentially the same modulo, kind of, uh, just uh, shifting, you know, the games, and that's it. So uh, to some extent, it shows that curification is so, 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 to some extent trivial, okay? Which is important uh, if we think about the way typically it, it could be like, uh, I mean, if we think about the way it's treated uh, typically in other models, okay? So, uh, so with these uh, games already, because we have a tensor product and we have this implication, we can interpret all the uh, linear lambda terms, okay? So t lambda terms where every variable appears exactly once, okay? Now, maybe we want to do a bit more. So for instance, we would like to have pairs in the language, okay? So uh, from that point of view, uh, what, what should be, uh, I mean, what should be the type of a pair? So if you remember what I said this morning, it's quite natural to consider uh, a, uh, if you like, a game where typically uh, you pick a game A and a game B and you let the opponent <coughs> choose the component in which he wants to interact with you, okay? So this is exactly what will be done here. So this uh, notation is called with, okay? So A with B is uh, the game where you have exactly the same moves as uh, in A and B the same polarities for each uh, move, as in A and as in B. But now, what are the plays? Well, it's exactly the plays of A and the plays of B, okay, where you've been careful to identify the empty play of A and the empty play of B, okay. 
So that simply means that a, a typical interaction in that game is you start the interaction, opponent chooses the component in which he wants to play, and you carry on. Okay? And in particular, once the component is chosen, you're never allowed to go back to the other one. Okay? So that's the big difference between this construction and the tensor product. Okay? Because in the tensor, we can always go from one component to the other. This is the parallelism. And here it's the choice of, say, a process calculus, okay? Yes? So now it's interesting to try and understand how, if you like, choice is related to implication, okay? And so there is a nice isomorphism, again, which is that for every sequential game, this game here is isomorphic to this one, okay? So maybe we could uh, think a bit about it, okay? What's happening? So what's happening typically in this game, okay? So remember in this game, opponent starts, and the only possible way to start is to play here, in A with B, okay? So the first move uh, by the opponent decides whether he wants to play in A or he wants to play in B, okay? On the other hand, once this, the component is decided, the remaining computation will play exactly like in X implies A or in X implies B, depending on the choice. Okay? And that means that the two trees, the two games as decision trees, are exactly the same. Okay? So now, okay, that's good. This is a fact that the two games here are exactly the same as trees. Okay? But what can we guess from that? Well, th let's think about a strategy in this game. Okay? So, because the, the ge this game is the same as this one, is the strategy here. Okay? But what is a strategy here? Okay, when you have a game A with B, a strategy is a pair of strategies a strategy for A and a strategy for B. Because clearly, if you say to someone, well, you can play, uh, you know, uh, chess or poker, okay, just I let you choose, you should be ready for both. So you should have a pair of strategies in your, you know, in your hand. And then depending on what uh, happens, you know, then you will adapt to uh, the wishes of your, of your opponent. So that means that a strategy here is a pair of a strategy here and the strategy here, okay? So uh, this uh, is written here, okay? There is a bijection between the maps from X to A with B and th the pair of uh, maps from X to A and from X to B, okay? So, uh, so yesterday, I, s I, mean I explained why c using categories is useful and natural. But now categories is a big uh, and beautiful theory, yes? Mm -hmm. Could you give an example of when uh, your strategy is to win for R but not for N? Well, uh, the thing is that they are not exactly the same strategies. I mean, typically here. You mean for the, sorry, for the whiz, you mean maybe? Yeah, for the Ah, okay, the whiz. Sorry, sorry. Okay, yes. So for instance, Yes. So uh, remember, we spent the morning playing at that game, okay? And uh, who, who lost? Uh, Deep Blue, I think, lost the game, yes. But anyway, we are sure we would win ourselves. And so now if I do this, yes? Yes, I mean, if I do this, then I'm exactly in the traditional problem of, uh, I mean, picking one of the, you know. So here, remember, we had, uh, uh, so how, how, how is, what, what's this game? Let's play it, okay? So uh, there is an opponent move here. This is an opponent move. Neg each negation is a move, okay? So this is an opponent move. Then this, there is a pair of this kind of, okay? This is like P, it comes from here, okay? So P must choose between playing in A, okay? So imagine A, imagine A is this game, okay? 
So like there is, and, and then this is something like this. Okay, it's a game and then the tree starting with, then it would be look exactly like this. So we would have this and this, uh, P like this. And so here we would play in some kind of A naught and here some kind of A. Oh, yes. So then the problem is that th there is no way to win unless we know A. So that means that the only possible winning strategies here you know, are the strategies we know already that they have a strategy in A or in not A. So that means it, it can only work if A is determined and you have a good recursive way to know which, which game wins, okay? So it's the difference between, I mean, it's, it's very stupid, it's the b difference between, you know, having Kasparov and Deep Blue and being clever, you know, or, you know, starting and saying, okay, which one should I choose? Because I will be beaten anyway, <laughs> okay? Yes. Except there is a difference here is that, uh, uh, yes, I mean, there is a difference because, yeah, okay, anyway, you, uh, let's say you play white and you play black here, okay, and so that's the only difference. But then you play white, or oh, yes, and you wait, something happens, nothing, nothing happens, you yes. Anyway, so, uh, and you see these distinctions, again, they are very important uh, if we think about the difference between intuitionistic logic and classical logic, okay. So the purpose is to say that this traditional div division, in fact, is superseded by this kind of analysis. You try and understand what's the interactive behavior, the difference between parallelism and choice is really important, okay? More important than we would believe, okay, a priori. So, okay, so now we see that uh, here, uh, a map from X to A with B is the same as a map, okay? And this is reminiscent, ex I mean, this is exactly the same uh, kind of uh, structure that we have here and that we have in sets and f with sets and functions. So, uh, so imagine that we have I mean, I could write this like this in, uh, okay, yes. So if I have a function from x to a times b, okay, there is a bijection between a function like this, so it's a function between sets, and a pair of functions like this. Do you agree with me? So, so here, if, I, if, I, if I'm pedantic, I would say that I, I work in the category of sets, okay? So in the category of sets and functions, okay? Whenever I have a function from x to a times b, it's a pair of functions, so in fact, this means this is always of the shape of the form H A, H B, and H A is here, and H B is here. Yes, do you agree with, with me? I mean, sets and functions clearly have this property, yes? yes? So it's quite, I mean, kind of wonderful because we have exactly the same structure on functions, you know, with like the idea of a pair of elements on sets, okay, and here, with our little toy model with, you know, transition systems and uh, polarities. And for that reason, so, and this is a general uh, definition in, in category theory, okay, so there is a theory of category, so we use it. Uh, it's the definition of a Cartesian product, okay? And so what is a Cartesian product? It's, it's an object, so it's a vertex, if you like, A with B, and two maps which correspond to the projections, okay? And the property is that whenever you have a pair of maps from X to A and X to B, you can factor it uniquely as a, as a map like this, okay? So this is, I, I mean, I don't ask you, especially for the people who are not aware of categories, to understand this picture because it takes time to uh, really appreciate it, but I just want to, to show because this is a typical picture you will find in, in books, yes? Textbooks and categories. 
Okay, but really, this is essentially the same as saying that there is just as many functions from x to a times b as functions from x to a and x to b. Okay, if you're very careful, it's equivalence essentially. Okay, so now it's quite amusing. Maybe we could we could play that little like exercise. So imagine I'm given A with B. So can maybe someone can describe the first projection because the, you see there is. So the idea is, you see, we start to develop some kind of uh, uh, schizophrenia where we see, you know, we think kind of games. Oh, they behave kind of like like sets. And strategies are a bit like functions, okay? So maybe we, we can define, I mean, we should be able to define notion of projection. So it's a strategy which is, I mean, behaves formally like a projection. So maybe someone can help me. So how would you define a strategy from this thing to this thing? And both of them are games, open and stars in A and in B, okay? And so the problem is to sh kind of build uh, an interactive behavior between these two games, which be something like a projection. No, it's yes. <coughs> so your final step going to query E equal A. Yes. So then you select <coughs> A and B given. Yes, so, so the query is here, yes? This is the first move of your open, I mean, of, of A, okay? And what the strategy does, it just tra transports the query here, okay? So if we can even draw a little thing like this, okay? So the query, then the, the projection just, so, so, so it from, from the point of view of this game, it's like the opponent, okay, the environment, which has to play on A, okay? Then there is maybe a response here, Okay, from the environment, and then we transmit it. Okay. So really, it's like uh, a copycat strategy that we we played. Okay, except that now we know that uh, I mean we will play only in the component A. Okay. So you see, one sh one should be very careful here because, uh, for instance. If I want to de de define a map in that direction, yes, maybe someone can tell me what I could do and maybe something unpleasant happens. Imagine I want to define a map from A into this A with B, okay? So uh, typically, if I think about like in a f function, okay, um, that means I would need to find an element in B that I can plug in it, yes? And indeed, that's what happens. So if we want to build a strategy from A to A with B, if the environment plays A, it's okay. I will just copy, and that's easy. But if the environment plays B, then I'm kind of stuck, and typically I will not answer. I will start a loop, okay? So I will play bottom. I will just pretend, okay? And that shows that, you see, one important thing here is that the projection is a logical kind of, anymore. And in particular, it's a total strategy, okay? It doesn't play bottom. It's never embarrassed. Transmits well, okay? Perfect citizen, yes? <laughs> and so it's important to have this kind of uh, methodology that if something works so well, it, we should keep it, okay? So, uh, okay, so now we have the ability because we have, so technically, we would say we have a monoidal closed category, so that's for the linear lambda calculus, with a Cartesian product, so we can interpret every lambda term with pairs, okay? And the, the pairs will be interpreted using this with, okay? So now, this is good, but we want the lambda calculus, okay? So in particular, we want the ability to duplicate. So, uh, how shall we do that? And th the point is that 
the way it's done is by backtracking. Okay? So duplication is, is, is backtracking. Okay? Just like when Frank was speaking about you know, backtracking for classical logic, you need to duplicate the formula at some point. Okay? And here the same thing happens that if you want to call again a procedure, then you need to duplicate it. But in a way, you duplicate the formula also. Okay? And so this is kind of, uh, at, on the logical si side, it's uh, kind of uh, uh, regulated by the contraction rule. Okay? So, so how does it work interactively? The idea is very simple. It's, again, the story of the opponent who is allowed to open new copies whenever he, 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 wants, he wishes one. Okay? So here is just the formal definition okay, of that game. So you say, OK, what is a move? It's simply, uh, it's simply a move played in A, but with an index in natural numbers. Okay? Because you can open maybe 73 copies, so there should be a, a natural number indicating which copy you're playing on. Okay? So each, each copy has its number, and the moves have this index. Okay? So you're indexing copies. So th the uh, uh, polarity is the same in a copy as in the original game. So you play the same game. Okay? And what is a play here? Okay? What is a play of that game? It's very easy. It's just a, a, a world. Okay? So it's a sec sequence of moves such that when you restrict to each copy, it is a play of A. Okay? That's easy. And the second condition is that for every prefix of S, so when you look, take that sequence of, of moves, okay, well, if the uh, game number I is not yet opened, then the, the game number I plus one is not yet opened. So that means that opponent should open the copies in order. You know, he opens the first copy, then the second copy, then the third copy. He plays in the second copy. He plays in the third copy. He opens the fourth copy, okay? So the opponent is always allowed to come back to uh, the copy he likes, but he should not open the seventh copy before he c the seventh copy before he opened the fifth copy. Yes, that's all. What does that still mean? Well, it's just to put some or some some ordering. You could indeed accept that the player plays, you know, the uh, 77th copy if he likes to, uh, but it's just a choice. We could have taken another choice, yes? But this makes it very simple and, and clear, okay? You open copies, and each copy has a number, and whenever you ask for one, then this is the next copy, okay? It's quite easy. So, at, okay, and now, uh, may maybe I could give an example just to, yeah, no, I, I will do like, like this, okay? So, okay, so you see, the, the, the quite important thing is that whenever we add a, a connective, we are looking for good, nice isomorphisms, like, like we had uh, already two of them, but now we'll have, we have two more, okay? And these ones are, extra, ex I mean, very, very important, very nice, and they are the, if you like, the, the, uh, the uh, how do you say that? Um, If you like the uh, the bone, I mean the really the the, the 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 central the central idea of linear logic. Okay, so maybe you heard about linear logic and so on, but everything, in a way, is here in this slide, in a sense. Okay, or it's really the the, the the most important thing, and this is where one realizes that this distinction between opponent and player is really important. Okay. And this distinction is not there, for instance, in concurrency theory or process calculi. And that's, uh, I mean, or not sufficiently there, but linear logic started from that, and it's, it's these two things are very, very nice and important. So how, how wh what is the, the idea? So the idea is to define A in place B as such, okay? So it means that it's a linear implication, but now you're allowed to use your input several times. So remember when this, like a program of that type is a strategy okay, of that type, thus it's, it plays player in B, but it plays opponent in bank A, okay, in this thing. So because it plays opponent, it can open as many copies of A as he likes. 
Yes, do you agree with me? Because that was the uh, starting point, I mean, of the definition of the uh, backtrack. So, so the, 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 if you like, the proof here, the strategy, is allowed to backtrack on A as many times as it likes. Okay. So that's the definition. And now, what we want to show is this property, that if I take A times B implies C, it's the same as A implies B implies C. Okay. Because this is the, the very, I mean, if you like, this is really the central thing. We want that when we take a program with two inputs, it's the same as taking a program of input A, then with output of that type B implies C, okay? If we have this, then we know, essentially, that we can interpret the simply type lambda calculus, okay, with duplication, okay? But now, there is this certainty that here, you see, we were very careful that uh, when we have a pair, we can use only one side, one component of the pair. So when opponents ask for A with B, it will only have one side of it, okay? either A or B. It cannot go back. If it started in A, it cannot go back to B. Okay? So on the other hand, here, okay, A and B are somewhat independent. Okay? So the question is how we go from here to here. And this is where there is this extraordinary isomorphism here. And what this says is this, okay? Bank, okay, so imagine you have a finite, like, like so something that you, I mean, is a resource, any resource, okay? So, uh, typically, uh, you have, what are the, your most fa favorite, favorite things, okay? I don't know, uh, cakes and chocolates, okay? So you have A with B, it's a, it's a pair, okay, of a cake and a chocolate. And the problem is whenever you pick a cake, the chocolate disappears, okay? And whenever you pick a chocolate, the cake disappears because this is the type here, okay? That's the way it's defined, okay? So now you say, okay, I want to build a proof of that type, okay? And that means that C, in order to prove C, okay, C is a big, like a big shop full of cakes and chocolates, you need to, 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 to pick a lot of cakes and cho chocolates, chocolates, cakes, chocolates, cakes, cakes, chocolates, okay? So how will you do this? Well, you have an infinite bag of these pairs of ca cakes and chocolates, okay? And the, the isomorphism tells you that it's the same as having two bags, a bag of cakes and a bag of chocolates, but now you can use the two bags Okay, so that when you use a bit of chocolate, then you can go and use a bit of cakes and the bag doesn't disappear, stupidly, okay? And so this connects, and I think it's for the first time, this connects, and this was like 25 years ago, okay? This connects choice to parallelism, okay? Something which is not, I mean, exactly uh, apparent, at least, in process calculi, okay? And the point is that, the connection is by replication. If you can re replicate choice, okay, then it's like you have a, an infinite number of both sides. Yes? But this does hold in TPS as well, doesn't it? Yes, but you need then, I mean, the problem is that this thing, now, okay, we have it, but I mean, the point, historically what happened is that Milner discovered this thing, he thought this is very good, so I should have it in my language, and then the pi calculus was kind of reformulated in the chemical abstract machine using this. Yes. But of course, this is a generic property. Okay? It's a kind of very. Pr you see, we're, we're trying to understand what are the basic principles, the atoms of logic. So here it looks like it's a nice molecule, and we can. Yes? Okay. So now, uh, very formally, uh, we have A with B implies C, but A with B, remember, is you, you take this bag of A with B, but now the bag of A with B is a bag of A and a bag of B. Okay? And now there is a tensor product in the middle, so you can apply this isomorphism that when we have a tensor product, we have like a, an implication of an implication. And then once, once you're there, you just apply the definition and you get that, okay? It's kind of, very, it's kind of luminous, okay? And the point is that uh, this little, you know, uh, story uh, happens in many places, okay? So historically what happened is uh, that uh, typically, there was uh, do in domain theory, 
So you have domains and continuous functions between domains. Uh, if you're uh, sufficiently careful, typically if you have so-called DI domains and stable functions, then you can decompose the implication as such. Okay? And this gave birth to so-called coherent spaces, and this was the origin, the semantic origin of uh, linear logic. Okay? So, so linear logic arose from the, the study of a model. Okay? But then, in, I mean, very quickly, when this was kind of clarified, people realized that this happened in many other models. So uh, in particular, uh, so Pierre-Louis and uh, Pierre-Louis Curien and Gérard Berry introduced the sequential algorithm model. And then, uh, like, François Lamarche and Pierre-Louis uh, kind of clarified this uh, decomposition and then realized that, in fact, the sequential algorithm model which was understood as some kind of idealized compilation, okay? In fact, uh, well, it's kind of, I mean, that works, and here, this little thing, they can really be understood as trees, okay? And in fact, the model I, 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 I show, I've shown you is some kind of offspring of that decomposition, okay? And so the story is much simpler in this kind of game theoretic view because you can decompose things, okay? And if you look at the original model, it's beautiful, but it's, I mean, it's much clarified by this decomposition. The, the implication uh, in the model, in the original model of sequential algorithm is very clever. Um, and here the good thing is that, in a way, uh, this kind of, of, of constructions are simpler, okay? The, the idea of backtracking is a very nat natural thing. And so you don't have to mix backtracking with implication which made the story quite complicated. So anyway, so what we get now, we have a model of the simply type lambda calculus, and so every simply type lambda term of that type, okay, is interpreted, maybe interpreted as a strategy of that game, okay. So that means here we have B as output, and for each input we need to put a bank, which means we need a bag of them, because maybe we'll use a lot of them. So a typical uh, example, okay, an illustration, is uh, number two in you know, church numerals. Okay? So it's defined like this. So f is a function from natural numbers to natural numbers. Here, x is a natural number. And here, f of f of x, this is the term that uh, is of type n, because it's applying f, this function f, twice on the x. And the point that the function f here is applied twice is really, I mean, you, in order to, to be able to do that, you need this little uh, modality here, okay, which tells you that you're allowed to do that, okay? And now, how does the interaction work? Well, the environment asks a question, what is the value of the Boolean? And clearly, the value of the Boolean will be this, okay? It will be f of f of n. And so the first thing the, the function, the, the term does, is like asking the value of this function here, because really, you know, it's very stupid. It needs, I mean, if you look at the term, it starts with f, so it should start the value of f, the output of f, okay? And imagine the function f here, so which is, uh, I mean, the environment knows the function f. Imagine it's, it's, uh, imagine it's uh, uh, constant, then we are done, okay? So if the answer to this question is just a value, then we get the value immediately, and we're done. But now imagine it's not a, it's not a, a constant, so, so this function needs its argument. So the function says, I'm sorry, I can't ask, I mean, I, so you see this is, the, 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 the function now answers here, and this means I'm sorry, I don't know. I mean, you need to give me my input, and then I can give you uh, my output. So the strategy here, what it does, it says, okay, then I'm here now, and what is the argument of f? It's f of x. So I should start again and ask what is the value of f. And again, the function says, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know. Give me my argument. So now the argument is x, okay? So it's in the environment. So, so the strategy may ask, well, please tell me the value of n here, okay? Now the environment answers n. And so what the strategy does is answering the, the second question here by, with n, and we get f of n. So we're here now. And now that the environment has answered f of n, I can transmit 
this f of n to the function again, which will answer f of f of n, and then the strategy answers f of f of n, okay? And so you can do that for all the lambda terms, okay? So this is an example here. So every lambda term becomes a little strategy, first order strategy, elementary thing, kind of very like low level, simple. Uh, and this shows in a way, because here you see I was describing the uh, kind of strategy associated to uh, this lambda term, that in a way the strategies are parsing the, the, the lambda term. So this is the, yes? Um, you, you said that because of the exponentials we get something like this and it's simply Yes. But do, do we really, are we getting like just um, <coughs> primitive exponential in their logic. Because it first to me that the simple type of time the calculus within your product need to match the, the tensor product that you're working with. Because we have two different ones here. We have the the, the and and the the with yes. yeah, very two yes. Yeah and because if you have a simple type of time calculus, that means you have a Cartesian closed category. Yes. So, so we have a Cartesian closed category. Yes. So the the, the I, you see, I don't want to use like uh, uh, bad words. <laughs> so I didn't say Cartesian closed categories, but in fact, this is uh, here. Like this thing says, the category is Cartesian closed. Okay. So uh, because it says that there is. Okay. So we can enjoy it for a minute. There is an adjunction between this a with here and, well, or here it's rather b with and here, b, imp b arrow. So that means b, b times is left adjoint to b implication. And that's it. We, we, we are in that. Yes? Yes. Oh, it's good you asked the question, indeed. So you see, I try to hide a lot in the, the carpet, but uh, yes. Because what I want to show is that, in fact, the principles are very kind of elementary. They speak about the kind of very principles of computer science. And of course, it's good to know that it's a Cartesian closed category. Uh, and what is beautiful is that, you know, it's like a door to a huge universe of mathematics. Okay, so, and we are connected. Now it's not just a door, we are kind of doing like, uh, and that's very important. But here I'm playing, you know, some kind of stupid game of trying to, to show that you don't need to have even this kind of uh, words or it's just very basic. Yes. Uh, where this one? Which one? Here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the, the kind of things which are, ve I mean, very nice. Okay. Is once you accept that the world is linear, okay, you put your bank when you need them. Okay. So in particular, here, I didn't put a bank here. I could have put a bank here because if I want to have the direct translation of, say, simply type lambda calculus, I would need a bank here because every time I have an implication, I should have a bank, yes? And the same here, I should have a bank because I'm on the left, yes? But the point is, if you think about it, what really does uh, church numeral is applying a function Sev several times to an argument, but the argument is just here once, okay? So, of course, if I put a bang here, my function may use the argument several times. So clearly I, should, I would need to put a bang here. And I think that's what you mean, yes? But that means that I, I can be very careful about what is used once or, or several times, yes? Okay, and that will come back uh, very soon, this question about uh, linearity, okay? Okay, so now, so we are there, uh, and essentially what I've uh, shown you is uh, uh, what we essentially, essentially un understood about 10 years ago, uh, and of course, what happened so uh, during the 90s is that people used that kind of models to interpret larger programming languages, okay? So for instance, what is, okay, and the, the idea is really 
inspired by aut aut automata theory. Okay? A program is some kind of interactive automaton. Okay? It produces interactions. And these interactions define the strategy. Okay? The strategy is a set of interactions, okay? I mean plays. And so if you think about automa an automaton producing a language, then you should think of a program as producing a strategy. Okay? And so in particular, if two programs describe the same strategy, just like when two automatons describe the same language, they are equivalent. Okay? So that's the general picture. And then it's quite fun to say, okay, let's take like any kind of primitive of uh, programming, like for instance, high order references, uh, continuation, I mean, a lot, a lot of them, and then say, what are the strategies associated to these uh, primitives? Okay? And really the idea is that each primitive is, is a little automaton that then you would plug with other automata using this technique of uh, compositionality. Okay? You compose automata. So a program is just a composite of each, uh, each line of code, if you like. Okay? So now, uh, when, uh, but th 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 there was some kind of uh, problem. Okay? Uh, it's that we had two kind of frameworks, and they were not exactly connected as much as they should have been. It's on the one side, <coughs> linear logic. So all the things I've shown you here, like the tensor product, the sum, etc., the bank, okay, all this comes, so it's the grammar comes from linear, uh, from linear logic. But on the other hand, it didn't work exactly perfectly well on games. Okay? And one reason is that when you take a game which starts by opponent, when you negate it, okay, just change the role, it starts by player, okay? So it seems like, okay, you, then you should consider games which maybe are both like opponent and player should start, and then you try to put some structure on this and it doesn't really work, okay? So the question then is why, okay? And so this is the reason for these uh, asynchronous games. So it's uh, a way to connect, if you like, linear logic, and especially the models of linear logic to games. And the point is that the models of linear logic, the traditional models, they don't speak about the dynamics. Okay? They just speak about the positions reached by programs. And what is quite extraordinary is that in that way you can reconstruct domain theory and everything. Okay? But you don't, I mean, the, the important point is that uh, the typical models of, of linear logic, they take a proof and they transport it in the set of final positions of the proof. Okay? And so, whereas in game semantics, you start from a proof and you construct a strategy, okay? And then the, what you would like to show is that the strategy reaches the positions described by linear logic, okay? So you want to kind of combine and have a positional model, you know, of proofs. And this is the whole point. So how do you, I mean, how can you uh, do that? Well, the, the idea is to start from something which works very well in uh, rewriting theory, okay? When you do rewriting theory, for instance, you want to rewrite a lambda term here, okay? Into, so into its normal form, which is n here. So you see you, you erase n here. There are many ways to do that, and the many ways can be organized, okay? So there is the so-called uh, standardization theorem, which says that every time you compute a term, a lambda term, to its normal form, you can do it uh, leftmost, outermost. Okay, so there is a kind of natural way. So if you have a lambda term, maybe you can start, you know, doing. But maybe at, if you do that, you should be very careful. It's better, in a way, to start from the outside. Okay, so the higher functionals, it's better to start with them. Okay, so and I mean the natural way to do that, I mean to prove the standardization property, is to compare all the possible rewriting paths starting from a lambda term, okay? And the comparison is by tiling, you see, like for instance, here you have this term here, and you can rewrite it by like maybe rewriting in N here, but or applying this lambda X here, which kind of uh, computes, no, you're puzzled. So, 
So, uh, so here you can compute in n, and this is this thing, or you can compute lambda x here, and this is this thing, okay? And the point is these two computations are completely independent, so there is some kind of, of nice square here. Whereas here, if you start from this term, you can compute in n, or you can erase n. And clearly, if you erase n, it's quicker, okay? So in a way, this kind of computation here is maybe kind of written to this one, which is better. So yes. N, M, and not N, N. The second last no, 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 I don't think so, because uh, look, this is, okay, I, I, I usually make a lot of typos in my slides, but here it's lambda x. And yes? Yes. So it's a little exercise in, in lambda calculus. <laughs> okay, you can try and draw that. Okay, so you should know, uh, uh, I mean, when I started this game semantics, I was intoxicated with this kind of diagrams because I spent like seven years on, of my life working on them. And so when I saw the, the game semantics, I, I thought, well, we should do the same. We should have some kind of church roster theorem, confluence theorem for uh, strategies, okay? So the, the difference is when you do rewriting, when you prove church roster, you know church roster, do you, do you know what I mean? Or like confluence, okay? So if you take a lambda term, you can rewrite it that way or that way, and then there is a way to converge again. Okay? So in particular, there is a unique normal form. Okay? So if you think about it, this confluence property is very nice, but it's, it's, it applies to a closed system. You have a program, and it's closed in the sense that it doesn't interact with the universe. Okay? So if, if you think about in, like strategies, they are just like programs in a way, but you're very careful about the interaction. So you should think of them as some kind of open systems, you know, like they're open to the world, they interact. And is it possible to have something like a church process theorem, a confluence theorem for that kind of interactive device? Okay. And the point is, what is quite interesting is that in a way this characterizes proofs. Okay. So church, if you like the church process theorem is a property of proofs, but as we will see, a proof by design is an interactive and confluent uh, mechanism or you know, uh, framework. So I will explain what I mean. So think about uh, this game. We saw it so many times. You know, uh, it's a Boolean game. Opponent asks a question and then I answer. So now if we think about, so, so remember we, we played the tensor games, okay? So imagine that uh, you have this wonderful computer for your Christmas uh, maybe in the years uh, 1970 something, uh, so very like a long time ago, and it has two memory cells. Okay, you're so happy, <laughs> and so uh, you want to play with it, and you uh, you call your little sister. You come on, yes, let's play, and she says, okay. So uh, you put a value on on your left cell and a value on your right cell, okay, because you have two memory cells, and I will tr I will try to guess them. Okay, so I will ask you. And then, of course, she, she may ask the value of the first memory cell. Then I will say true. Then the, the, the value of the second memory cell, I will say false. But of course, she could start in the other, di I mean, in, in the other direction. Okay? She, should, she could ask the, the value of the second, the second memory cell and the value of the first one. And then the question is, well, there should be a, a relationship between this position and this position after all, because they say the same thing. They say that my memory cell is... Uh, true tensor false. You see, it's true here and false here. So, okay, <laughs> you know, we could say very naively, let's bend. So we have a tree and we bend the tree, okay? So I saw, uh, so I, we don't know this movie in France, but I saw everywhere Thor movie in, in the States. So it looks like, so you need that strength to take the, the, this huge, you know, formula and you will try to bend this, this thing. It's nice, but it's a bit unstable, okay? So it's better to go further even, okay? And say, okay, let's work in a situation where it's not just a bended tree, it's really some kind of n-dimensional structure. And in fact, we will essentially need two dimensions. And the two dimensions are just here to say that maybe uh, if I play a move and then another move, in some situations, I can permute the ordering, okay? So uh, typically here, uh, you have this sequence of computations here, of interactions, but maybe this question, so you see it's question one, answer, question two, answer. 
maybe the question two, you could ask it a bit earlier and you see the permutations here. So if you like this path here, is can be deformed into this one and this one can be deformed into this one. Yes? That's the idea. So it's really like some kind of homotopy, you know, you deform a path into another path. And then you get this little diagram. So if you think about, uh, uh, I mean, this is a good exercise, draw Boolean tensor Boolean, like this, okay? It's a some kind of little flower. It has four maximal positions, okay? Because you have four, yes, this is French here, because V means vrai and F means faux. So you have uh, uh, true tensor, true, true tensor, false, false tensor, true, false tensor, false. So that means you have four maximal points, okay? And then you have this little tulip, or I don't know, tulips are not for, no, they don't have for anyway. You have this little flower, and that's where you play, okay? And the point is the strategy picks one of the, of the leaves and plays on the leaves, okay? That's, okay? And so you, you can think that when we go further in higher types, we have more and more beautiful uh, flowers of that style, yes? But how to specify the way the player forgets one game he was playing when he's playing the other game? Yes, so that will be very important indeed. So what we will prove is that now that we moved to that kind of positional game, we'll take the usual strategies, okay? And the strategies we, 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 we studied, they have all their memory. So they did all that, you know, path in the, in the branch. So this means now it's a trajectory, okay, in that uh, kind of asynchronous game. So it's a, it's a trajectory in that game. And they remember the trajectory, yes? That's a general strategy. And the theorem is that the proofs, they forget their path. So they are positional. They don't care about the way they are reached that point, okay? And it's quite, I mean, it's quite uh, fascinating because a position, a position in that game doesn't know anything about the, the way the sequence are organized and so on. It's, it's just, uh, if you think about a formula, a position in that game, if you think a bit about it, is a sub-formula in the sense it's a partial exploration of the formula. Okay, so that means that if I give you a, I mean, if you give me a formula, uh, uh, formulate, I mean, in that logic, okay, so tensor, negation, sum, and so on, then a proof is simply uh, a set, a well-organized set of explorations of the formula, okay? Yes. And whenever you've explored part of the formula, you, you know where you are, but you don't know, the, you don't remember how you came there, okay? And so, that explains why, I mean, how linear logic was able to interpret proofs as positions, because indeed the positionality theorem says that you don't need, I mean, you can reconstruct the dynamics from the positions, okay? So that's the general idea, but we are not there yet. So, uh, quarter yes. Quarter past five. Yeah. Quarter past five, wonderful, wonderful. Not later. No, 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 not later, not later. Okay, so, so we are there. So you see, we started from trees, because you're exhausted, we're all exhausted, no? I see, uh, yes. Yes, I cannot imagine, everybody's sleeping at home now for me. So, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so really the idea is we start from this, okay? We start from, from a huge tree. Now we think of it as a more geometric, in a more kind of uh, geometric way. So we have this kind of tiles. And now we prove, okay, we will prove that, uh, in fact, every strategy coming from, from a lambda term is positional, okay? That's, the, that's what we are going to do. So, okay, but first I should explain how these asynchronous games are defined, okay? So instead of playing on a game, sorry, instead of playing on a tree, we need to, to play on some kind of structure where we, are, we allow moves to be permuted, okay? So we can permute a move after another move and, and, and do that kind of things. And it's very important, I mean, just think about uh, a typical day in your life, it's always good to say, okay, maybe I could have done this after that and try to understand the causal structure of your, of your day, okay? Of your life maybe, I don't know. So, uh, so what is an even structure? It's, a partially ordered set, 
is very simple, such that every, uh, for every uh, uh, element of that set, an, an element of that set is called an event, so every event has a finite number of events below it, okay? And this is the first condition, and the second condition is, so that this is the condition about the ordering, and this is a condition about incompatibility, okay? So two events could be incompatible. So typically, if you want to play the game, uh, boole the Boolean game, the event true will be incompatible with the event false. So we cannot have both at the same time, okay? And the condition is, is, is here, it says that if M is incompatible with N, and P is above N, that means that N is a kind of causal, is part of the causal explanation for P, then M should be incompatible with P, okay? So if you're incompatible with someone, you're incompatible with all its offsprings, okay? So now, what is, uh, so given a, a, an even structure, you can Im immediately construct a graph, okay? And in that graph, you can permute uh, moves or events. So a position is simply defined as a compatible, so pairwise compatible, you know, every events are compatible, downward closed subset of M, okay? So you have this uh, ordering and you pick uh, a compatible downward closed subset. This is a position, and now the asynchronous graph associated to the event structure, its vertices are the finite positions, and now how do you go from a position to another position just by picking an event, okay? So if you want to go from a position to another position, you just pick an event and you ask that y is equal to x union m. Okay, and the union should be, should be disjoint, that means the event should not appear in x. So a typical uh, example is, uh, so the shoe shop, okay, shoe shop, yes, experience, yes. So you buy a pair of shoes and then the problem is in which order you will put them, okay? <laughs> so uh, you need to clearly to buy the pair of shoes bef yes, before trying them. Yes, it's very late, yes. We <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so we should clearly, I mean, at least in France, I don't know here with Nike shoes, but we should buy the shoes, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, no, okay. And then the question is whether I put the left shoe and then I lace it. I put the right shoe and then I lace it and then I can exit the shop, yes? So uh, if we think of, this is the event structure, clearly I cannot leave the shop without my shoes, okay? And so it's really uh, the kind of synchronization and causal structure we have in programming and systems, everything. And so this is an event structure and now what is the position? Well, this is the empty position, nothing happened yet. Then I bought my shoe and so this is this position here, it's a downward closed subset, okay, of the event structure. Then I go, I, I go left, I put the left shoe and then I lace it, I'm here, this is the position, okay? And now right shoe, uh, I mean, and I lace it, I'm here. And now when I'm here, I'm able to exit, okay? So you can think of this thing, so this is the, the, the place where we will play, okay? We'll play on that uh, asynchronous graph, okay? Asynchronous means you can permute the, the moves, okay? But the point is that this thing is generated by this, okay? So typically, what uh, in, in type theory, a type is something like this, okay? And then when you explore the type, okay, you are just following some track here, okay? And you can think of this exploration, I mean, of this any track here as some kind of wave going from below and slowly slowly, you know, like going and eating each of the events, like, okay? So this is why it's a really, what we call truly concurrent model, you know? L1 and R1 are really independent here. And this is, uh, this is what is captured by the fact that you can permute them, yes? So if, so maybe people here uh, are aware of uh, game semantics, there is the notion of arena games with pointers, <coughs> And in fact, the pointers of arena games are simply some kind of ghost of this uh, event structure relation. So for instance, if I do B, L1, L2, R1, R2, E, okay, there are pointers in the arena games, and in fact, they are just this little thing, okay. Okay, now, uh, and yes. Now, what is an asynchronous game? Very easy, it's just an event structure. I mean, I don't change anything as a definition. But every, every event, every move 
as a polarity. Okay? So instead of playing on a tree, I play on uh, an asynchronous game on an even structure. Okay, that's quite easy. Now, where is the so so I will play the dumb thing. Okay, I will pretend. Okay, I, now I have some this kind of graph, and I will I will say okay, I'm interested in uh, history full strategies. So strategies which remember their past. Okay, for the moment. So in a way, I'm consistent with the previous model. So I will try just and do like it's a tree. Okay, whenever you have a graph, a pointed graph, you can pretend it's a tree. Okay. So I say a legal graph is just uh, a graph which is starting from the empty position and satisfying that each, you know, the first move is open and the second move is player, the, the third move, and so on. So it's alternating. Okay? And that way, I reconstruct an alternating tree. So I reconstruct a sequential game uh, as before. And the strategy is defined e exactly as before. A deterministic strategy is a strategy which plays on that tree. So in that sense, it remembers its past. It remembers, you know, it remembers everything that happened in its short life. Okay. So now <coughs> there is this very important result in uh, '94 by Highland and Ong and Nico in independently. They, they were able to characterize the interactive behaviors of lambda terms. So the idea is you have strategies, but among the strategies, some of them, as we saw, are interpretations of lambda terms. So, so you see, you, you are taking a lambda term, you interpret it as a strategy, and the question is, which strategies are coming from lambda terms? It's a very natural question, okay? And some strategies are not coming from lambda terms. Okay. So you, you understand what I mean? So you, you, you write uh, uh, your uh, purely functional program, and the question is, what is the difference between a purely functional program and a program which could have access to references or whatever? Okay, and so we will uh, show that in fact this is the difference is, if you like, the real I mean the kind of intrinsic property is pos positionality. Okay, so but the way it's defined here in this paper is an isolation strategy is a play which ac which which plays according to the view. So there is a notion of view. So that means that when you you played uh, a long path okay, of moves, a long play, you are kind of amnesiac, amnesic, yes? You don't remember everything. So you are like this, a bit lost, but you will play according to what you remember. So this is your view. And the extraordinary thing is that the notion of innocent strategy, so these amnesic strategies, they compose well. So it's like you put two amnesic people and then they discuss together and the composite is still amnesic exactly in the same way they are. So it's kind of miraculous, okay? And there is a very important, uh, I mean, a very important thing here is the proof that innocent strategies compose well. And this is a very subtle proof. And if you, if you look ab at it for some time, you realize, in fact, that it's possible to, okay, if you, if you go into these asynchronous games, it's possible to, to replace <coughs> this notion of amnesia by a much more local and kind of simple, simpler characterization, which is this one. And this is really inspired by rewriting. Okay? You will immediately recognize if you know a bit of rewriting theory or, or asynchronous transition systems, you know what it means. It's very simple. Okay? So, uh, and this says in a way, if you are very gentle, it's a bit like you're amnesiac. Okay? So what is a gentle strategy, an innocent strategy? So, okay. so imagine that this path here is followed by the strategy. So really the strategy played this trajectory. So it starts from the empty position, then a lot of things happened, and now you have this opponent move, this player move, this opponent move, and this player move. And then it carries on. Okay? Well, now imagine that your opponent here, okay, is also able inside the game to play earlier. Okay, so, so here, instead of asking the question here, he asks the question a bit earlier. Yes? Well, uh, an innocent strategy is immediately able to adapt itself to the request and say, okay, well, if you ask me the question earlier, I will answer you in the exactly the same way as I answered you here. So I can also pull back my answer 
And so my answer here is the same as this one. And the way, the reason, I mean, why do I say it's the same is because we, I have these permutations here. Okay? So you see, opponent has, has decided to play here, and now player answers the same thing here. And now the point is, we ca in that way, we can close the diagram. Okay? So, so I claim that every lambda term, when you interpret it as a strategy, has this property. Okay? And that says something about this kind of deep confluence property that maybe the environment may decide to interact in another way. Okay? And then I adapt. So think again about these two booleans that I had, you know, my little game. Imagine my little sister, she decides to play in the other order. I will answer in the same way. Okay, I'm a good guy, you know, I'm not cheating. And this is exactly what happens here. Okay? Opponent may ask the value, okay. And imagine I cheat. Okay? Well, this means maybe I have some kind of, you know, device that enables me to test my si little sister, check whether the way in which she will, the, the order in which she will ask things. And this is typically you can do uh, something you can do with exceptions or control, okay? So it's, I mean, it's not just, you know, I mean, it's quite simple in a way. The ideas are pretty simple, but it's something we meet all the time, yes? So I will explain at, at some point why this is, uh, I mean, I mean, the connections to uh, uh, programming, I mean, other, other things, but this will be uh, tomorrow, okay? So, okay, so this is the, the first property that every lambda term has, and the second property is the same, essentially. It says that if you have a sequence like this, up to here, and opponent has a question, then if he gets an answer a bit earlier, he will get the answer afterwards. So it's a kind of liveness property. If that works here, it will work a bit later. Okay. So and these two properties are satisfied by lambda terms. So you see, I take the model I gave in the first part, like uh, this morning, and uh, at the beginning of uh, this lecture, I take a lambda term, I interpret it as a strategy, I look at the strategy and I realize it satisfies these two properties. And more than that, the two properties characterize entirely the lambda terms. So a lambda term is the same thing as a strategy which satisfies these two properties. Okay. And the point is that from these two properties, it's possible to reconstruct the lambda term. Okay. So this shows that the very idea of lambda calculus, if you like, is completely concurrent. Okay. It's, a, it's about the ability to adapt to one's environment. Okay. And if you cheat, so if, for instance, you know, when something happens left to right or right to left, you don't behave in the same way, you're not a proof anymore, at least not a proof of pure logic, okay? So that's the idea. So from that uh, characterization of proofs, we can show this, that the strategy is positional exactly when for every two play, so, okay, that's a, sorry, that's a definition. <laughs> so a uh, definition of a positional strategy, okay? So what is it? Uh, it's uh, this property that, I mean, you guessed before I even uh, stated it. Okay, so, so now you see we are playing in some graph. So we start from, uh, we start from uh, the empty position. Oops. And now I have S1 and S2. And both S1 and S2 are in the strategy. Okay? They, are, they are elements of the strategy, I mean, they are trajectories of the strategy. Okay? So they are alternating, alternating sequences of moves, and they reach the same position. Okay? Position X. Now, second uh, condition is from X, I have T which reaches y, okay? And this, uh, yes. And this, okay? This play here is in sigma also, okay? So that means that, okay, the, the strategy followed S1, then reached a position, and then it carried on, and this trajectory here is in the strategy. 
But of course, maybe you see this part of the uh, trajectory depends on what happened in the past. Okay? So positionality says that in that case, I also have S2t in sigma. Okay? So this was, yes, this is S1t. And, and this says that if you are at a position x, what happens next doesn't depend on your past in a way. Okay? You, you may have several ways to reach the same position, but it will not alter your future. Okay? Of course, the, I mean, and this, that's where it's very subtle. It's not, you didn't come here by chance. Okay? You know that. You know, you know where we are. You know, if you think it was, I mean, why you're here. Okay? It's not by chance. On the other hand, now that you're here, maybe it's your position. Okay? So that means that in declarative programming, if you like, you know, in pure functional programs, there is a notion of state. Okay? And this notion of state is the position. Okay? And the position is, remember, is a partial exploration of the type. Okay? So in particular, when we mix <laughs> functional programming, I mean purely functional programming, with side effects, then we will have uh, I mean, a notion of state which, is, which will be more general, okay? which will not be necessarily simply an exploration, partial exploration of the type. Okay? So, I mean, a very stupid, very simple illustration is this strategy. Okay? So we played it, and in fact, we see that what really matters are these four positions here. Okay? So, of course, interactively, the strategy is, is this pair of paths. Yes, but now, in fact, and in that case, it's very simple. These four positions are sufficient to reconstruct the strategy. Okay, but what is interesting is that you see here, uh, even from that position. So imagine your, you know, my, my, like your little sister asked the two questions at the same time. Then you're able to answer that this is the this is the answer. Okay, so this means there is a notion of kind of position, but also that enables you to, to interact in, in a more parallel way. Okay? And this has to do with the structure of lambda terms. So lambda terms are, tr are trees. So in particular, normal forms are trees. And what we are playing here, in a way, are, okay, syntactically, they are head variables. So every move is a head, head variable of a tree. So what happens on that side of the lambda term uh, and on that side of the lambda term is completely disconnected. Okay, so if someone asks me the value of the head variable here and the head variable here, if you ask me the, 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 the value at the same time, I can answer, you know, in one go. So we can play it parallelly. Okay, so this, if you like, the parallelism which I describe here, you know, the conquer kind of th these properties, in fact, these two little properties, they enable to reconstruct the notion of normal form in, in the lambda calculus. Okay, because a lambda term is a tree. Okay. And the tree, in, the, in, the, in, the, in concurrency theory, a tree is a parallel structure, is a concurrent structure, because there are many ways to explore it. Okay. So, uh, and that's the connection. So, five minutes for me. So, you see, what happens now is this. We have a proof, okay, so a proof in uh, a basic logic um, any logic, you know, I mean, sufficiently. Uh, so we, we're working in, well, so in the fragment we consider, okay, there we have a proof and there is a notion of strategy associated to it, okay? Now, if we look at the halting positions, so there are the positions where the strategy stops, okay? The positions which define the strategy. In fact, it appears that this is, we get something which in the literature is the click of the proof and the click of a proof is uh, the uh, a set of positions, okay, and the discovery of this set of positions is, uh, I mean, led to the discovery of linear logic. Okay, so if you like, here it's really something which organizes linear logic. It's the fundamental thing of linear logic. The fact you go from a proof to a clique, which is a set of positions, and now the fact that there is a triangle like this shows that in a way there should be a logic upstairs. Okay. And in particular, a natural question is, okay, these are the four positions considered in linear logic. What are these positions? 
what are their status? Okay? It's a natural question. And in fact, so this is what I will speak tomorrow about, really. The point is that these hidden positions are negations. They are turns in the game. Okay? So in a the Boolean in, in linear logic is interpreted like this. It's 1 plus 1. It's you know, a Boolean is either true or false. And plus means it's a, it's a disjunction. Okay? So it's I feel like it's 1 or 1. Okay? But now, in, in uh, the logic I will consider, uh, negation is not involutive anymore. Okay? So that means if you start from a game and you negate it, and you negate it again, there are two moves. Okay? One move because you negate it once, and another move because you... So whenever you negate, you need to lift. Okay? And this may, uh, is related to the fact that when we negate, in fact, we give a turn to the opponent. Okay? It's my turn. I mean, it's your turn now. Okay? So negation, if you like, is the time of logic because this is the, the time we take to interact. And so if we say that double <coughs> negation is the identity, like in linear logic, then we forget the time. And this is the reason why uh, it w I mean the, the models of uh, linear logic were speaking more about uh, the positions than the dynamics that enables to reach the position. Okay. And so now this uh, is a Boolean will be interpreted as double negation of 1 plus 1. And then we can play again that game with uh, modalities. Okay? So in particular, something I will explain is that if we, if, we, if we have a Boolean like this, then we are in a, uh, in a logic or in a programming language where whenever a Boolean is called, there should be an answer to the Boolean. So this means really here it's a double negation. Opponent has the question. The player should answer. Is forced to answer. It's linear. Okay. Now here, because you have this little modality, the the, the boolean is, doesn't need to answer. Maybe it will never answer. Okay. And that is the difference between uh, a programming language like PCF, so it's simply type lambda calculus with fixed points. Okay. Where you don't have control. It's here. Okay, you don't have control operators. Now, when you add this little thing, you will enable, this will enable the system to have, uh, like, uh, call CC. You, know, you can do things that you're not allowed to uh, do with this, this one. And the reason is that if you apply control, I mean, one purpose of applying a call CC is to uh, uh, have to, to not use a stack. Okay? You have a kind of stack and you will go and not use some part of the information around. Okay? And this is allowed because you have this little operator which tells you that you have some kind of garbage collector around. Okay? And so uh, we will look at uh, things in this way and maybe, uh, yes, I'm, I'm done essentially because uh, uh, Maybe just to, sh to, sh to show you, you see this formula here, okay? Then we can translate it into the formula where uh, we are very careful here about the fact that <coughs> the player is allowed to uh, start again, to backtrack, okay? So this means that we, we, this logic will provide us with a very basic language which is exactly, I mean, it's ex I mean, is Completely, I mean, so I will explain that tomorrow, but it's uh, really uh, the logic of sequential games or these asynchronous games, okay? It's the same thing. So then uh, there, is, there is no separation and we can work with these game theoretic uh, intuitions directly in the logic, okay? So if you like games in a way, and strategies is a programming language when could to say uh, it like this, okay? Rather than simply a semantics. So uh, maybe there are questions, because it's the time for questions. OK, so uh, I've done my job. <laughs> ah, ah, you're supposed to play a game, so uh, <sighs> yes. Yes, so that will be done tonight, yes. So 
if you want to have a long night, then uh, yes, <laughs> it will be there. Okay, thank you.